it, it's true. It's like your home is your castle, right? World travel is going down, but then hey, home home renovation and home uh home entertainment, things like that has gone up. A lot of us can naturally fall into this, you know, normalcy bias where we assume that the way things were yesterday are the way they're supposed to be today and it's the way it's supposed to be in the future. If you if you keep on waiting and waiting, right, for the next recession, oh no, this is this is too risky for me, this COVID situation or um this this uh, I'm waiting for an upswing, right? You're always waiting. For you viewers out there, when you're 25 years old, put in the do, okay? Mm -hmm. Work your ass off. What is up, YouTube? Matt McKeever here, and in today's video, I sit down with Casey Wong, and we just discuss what's going on in the world right now in 2020 in regards to the real estate market. Casey and I dive into some of the business models that we think will succeed, some of the business models that might struggle, and just our general perspective on what's going on and what the future might hold. Now, obviously, we don't have crystal balls. No one can perfectly predict the future. This is just us sharing our perspective during these uncertain times. So we dive into things like, will people continue to travel? Will people continue to eat out at restaurants? Are people going to want to invest more in their personal residences rather than say traveling or eating out? We get into a lot of interesting discussions in today's video. If you guys are enjoying these videos with Casey, what I need you to do is smash that like button, jump in the comment section and let us know that you want more Casey. And if you're brand new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, let's dive in to Casey's advice. Um, I'd love to kind of transition the conversation and just start talking about uh, what you see for the future. You know, do you think a lot of the disruptions we're seeing right now will have long lasting impacts? Do you think will most restaurants bounce back? You know, do you think will travel and things of that nature return to normal? Any sort of, you know, pet theories or any things that you've been thinking about in regards to how where maybe opportunities are right now in the market that people can maybe try and take advantage of whether real estate or non real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the restaurant. Cause like we used to spend a lot of money on restaurants. Like my wife and yeah. I used to go out probably two, three, four, five times a week. Uh, it's just that we don't have the time and mm -hmm. just running around with the kids and all and doing activities. And we're some, to be honest with you, we spent a, quite a bit of money. We looked at our, our bills go wow this we actually saved a lot because of this covid situation so we eating in a lot um and making our own meals right so um i think people are going to change a little bit for the short term uh say three or six months um they're gonna be eating home a, a little bit more um so i i think the restaurants are going to hurt a little bit more uh and then it's going to be back to normal I, I say after six months uh even up to nine months i think bang it's gonna be back to normal after this whole like blanket is this this covid uh isolation is is taken off i think the restaurants will see uh, a normal uh, normalcy after probably about a year so i say six months to one year for for restaurants um what your another question was that other businesses right yeah just other opportunities yeah. or thoughts other opportunities. like even do you think you know like office space do you think will that be impacted going forward do you think that uh yeah. companies will need the same size of office space as they did pre-covid post-covid yeah i think it's it might change like people people like working from home i actually don't i like to get out there and um be up and about like on my buildings and all um but i i do see a change because I, I i think that if businesses and companies like we're a very small company we have a small little office um off of dvp in uh near eglinton um but yeah if we can keep it down because uh, size wise, if we can keep the size down, mm -hmm. the square footage, it saves us money. And some of the, uh, the employees would, would like to actually work from home because they don't have to travel. The travel time is, is, is killer on a lot of people, especially in, the, in, in Toronto. Uh, but I do see a change. Um, even the, uh, the company that we're renting our, our office space from, they haven't done very well in, in the office space. Um, probably in the other areas they, they, they did, uh, and they're doing well, but in this space, uh in this floor space they haven't ha they haven't had it fully rented um but i do see a change um it might be better in a way that for us as small owners that i don't have to rent office space i can get to save money but for the people that's owning office space and these areas they they have to understand that we're you know times are really changing and people are um they don't want to work from the office they want to work from home um and they can do this zoom now and 
everybody's mm-hmm. sort of on board right now that they can, you know, click of a button, they're 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 in a meeting, right? And it makes a lot of sense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it saves on time. Um, people can still, you know, get the work done. Um, but mind you, it's going to create other opportunities like this space of Zoom. Like I don't even know Zoom, yeah. before, right? Um, I'm I'm sure this the, the, these programmers made you know quite a bit of money doing this, right? And there's you can change it around. Um, and there's always opportunities. Once there's an, you know, there's a failure someplace. Okay. There's going to be an opportunity somewhere else. Like Blockbuster, there's a failure in Blockbuster. Boom. Mm-hmm. Netflix. So everybody's on Netflix or, or the Disney channel, whatever it is. Right. So it's, it's going to just change. Right. You just have to be yeah. willing to change with the times. Right. Yeah. I think, I personally think it's going to be really interesting to see how humans and society in general adapts yeah. because, um, it, you know, it doesn't really matter which guru or thought leader you listen to. Um, most people say somewhere between three to eight weeks is the length of time it takes to form a new habit. And that's essentially the length of time that we're all going to be under quarantine, social distancing at a minimum, in my opinion. So I think that, you know, there are going to be consumption and behavior patterns that are going to change and form into new habits that might take a while for some people to say, adjust back to normal or the way things were before, or they may never uh, do so. So I know one of my personal uh, little pet theories right now is I think we will see a drop in, you know, outside entertainment. So like going somewhere as well as world travel, I think we'll certainly see an impact on that. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a re-entrenchment of the belief that your home is your castle. And seeing yeah. people like return to things like home theaters or home renovations to really yeah. invest in their home. One, because they just recently spent a lot of time at home and probably formed new habits that revolve around their house. But two, I think there will be at least a subsegment of the population that are going to be concerned that this is going to happen again. And yes, they're sir. going to want to be more prepared for it. And I think one of the ways they're going to want to be more prepared is just to have a more enjoyable experience if they find themselves you know, on lockdown or under quarantine in the future. That's true. Actually, I'm building my house now, right? Um, just, just a little backstory. Yeah. I, I, I rented out my basement for how many years? Uh, thirteen years. Yeah. Right? To two tenants, it was uh, it's all legal. Um, but rented out my basement for thirteen years, and now I'm building my house. And what, what you touched upon is that people are going to be putting more money into their homes. We're having a home theater. We're having a swimming pool. Um. It's true. It's like your home is your castle, right? Um, I, we are putting in a little bit more money because I'm not going to get a cottage, right? I, I'm not like that. I'm not yeah. going to drive an hour to two hours to go to a cottage and clean up another another home and then relax. I'm like, no, I'm going to have my home. I'm going to relax there. So we, I'm gonna, so uh, if, if you take a look, exactly what you just said, like the blockbuster to Netflix from world travel is going down, but then, hey, home home renovation and home uh, – home entertainment, things like that has gone up. Right. Mm-hmm. So look at that. That's, it's true. So our habits are going to change. Um, it just depends on where can you see that opportunity, right? So, Hey, do you see an opportunity in home renovation or entertainment systems, things like that, that might spike, right? I'm not sure. I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah. Um, yeah. None of us do, but at the same time, I think at least for me, it's a fun game to play with as long as it's in the safe space of knowing no one's yeah. got a crystal ball. No one can predict the future. But at the same time, I think most people are willing to accept and believe that things are probably going to look different in the future than they looked yeah. in the past. And at the same time, I think a lot of us can naturally fall into this, you know, normalcy bias where we assume that the way things were yesterday are the way they're supposed to be today. And it's the way it's supposed to be in the future. But yeah. I know I just even look at like, the short 35 years that I've been on this planet and things have changed massively over the last 35 years, right? Like cell phones, the internet, mass communication and interactions, and just even just the more free flowing borders that we had, we had at least a few months ago versus we had 10, 20 years ago during the iron curtain and things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, Mm -hmm. it's very it it's very dynamic things will change uh you you mentioned that like i mentioned about the uh um uh the netflix from the blockbuster to the netflix yep. 
uh, we have one investor that makes games, game apps. Mm -hmm. right? I'm pretty sure that that has spiked, right? Yeah. People are not moving. They're, they're not going out. They're not socializing. I'm sure making a, another game that people are, are, are going to spend an extra dollar two or three dollars or whatever uh, on, on a game on your phone that they're home anyways, that the people are going to be spending more money on that. So I definitely see that as happening. Um, and it, it's, it, it's, it's, people will adapt to that. Yeah. People adapt, people will change. And it's how we spend um, uh, or sort of consume our daily lives, right? So it could be your entertainment and how we um, spend our money. So it, you, you can't, you, you definitely can't be um, stagnant. Right. And that's what happens to the blockbusters of this world. Right. So that mm -hmm. they're going to go down. Right. Um, but mind you, housing is still always going to be a need. Right. Yeah. Well, there, there's going to be people will still have to live. It, it depends on how they're going to be living. Is it going to be smaller? Is it going to be in a community where um, is it going to be a multifamily? Is it going to be in uh, a coach house? It's going to be a basement apartment, things like that. So there's an opportunity for, for everybody, but it depends on if you're going to be taking it. Right. Mm -hmm. So for your listeners, for your younger listeners, if you're able to do this, there's, you, you can't always be waiting. Like we're in this pandemic or we're in this situation, let's say in a recession, are you going to wait for the next recession? Are you going to wait for the next high to buy? Uh, how much time do people have? Right. Yeah. So you take a look at I'm 45, you're 35. How much more time do, you, do people have, right? Okay, so mm -hmm. you're, you're 45 like me, right? You have a fairly stable job. Um, I, I like I, I told you this before. Let's say you have a C level position, or you're an executive, right? You're a chartered accountant. Usually, you're going to be in your 40s, all right? Yep. Probably, right? Because if you're an executive, you're an accountant. You, you go through those, you know, those levels, and then yep. you reach this level where, let's say, you're um, just shy of partner level. You can probably be in your 40s. 40 to about 50 years old. You only have mm. probably about 10 years, 10 or 15 years left. Okay. And then it's going to be a big shuffle. Then you'd be coming down. Okay. Because most of the people, most companies will actually start to be honest with you. When you're around 50, 55, they're going to be letting you go. Okay. Um, and I don't know if people know that, but mm -hmm. that happens. You're not, you haven't most likely prepared for that. Okay. Prepare the income side, right? Because mm -hmm. you're making a, a like a lot of money at that time. Like most partners will probably make about what a, a starting partner will make about 200 K right to 250,000 yep. upward to about, about maybe a 600, 650,000 right per year. Mm -hmm. They don't look for opportunities to make that, make that income again on, on, yeah. on that. They're not going to side hustle like what you and I do, right? They're not going to say, okay, let's, let's rent out my basement. They're not going to do that. They're going to be living in a nice posh little house. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, go on those lavish vacations two times a year um, and, and not not worry about that, right? Not worry about, hey, what if I lose my income? So going back to the question of um, how long can you wait? Most people wait too long. Yes. Most people will wait until something bad happens. When I lose my job, when when I don't have that income, oh, um, I can't work any, anymore. Uh, I got into a really bad accident when I uh, went – uh, uh, whatever rock climbing, <laughs> and that's something where people have to look. Let's say when you're when you're above when you're when you're older than forty, you should have looked at it when you're twenty. Seriously, twenty five, right? Your your viewers should should be looking yeah. at to prepare for them when they're forty years old, forty five or fifty years old when they get let go. Okay, when they're downsized. Okay, when the economy goes down, when the their their company shifts. Right downsize to upsize right <laughs> whatever it's like yeah. people, people don't realize that your job is not secure right mm -hmm. and the time to do it is now right why why would you keep on waiting so what i'm what i'm saying is that do it yourself you do have to be you, you have to take care of yourself first right because you can't take care of somebody else if you're not taking care of yourself okay um and an opportunity won't come like for, forget about forget about the the cycle sometimes right even my parents, when they bought um, their little, uh, um, it was a little triplex in Dan, like near Danforth, there's a Greek town. They bought, they bought it in eighty eight or eighty seven, I think, right before the drop. So the the, the major drop was eighty nine, uh, the sort of the housing collapse, right, in Ontario. Mm -hmm. What if they 
seriously, they bought it at 160 something, 170,000. Um, and they sold it in one year and they it went up by 90,000. Okay. Maybe about a year and a half or something, but they sold it right before the 1989 crash. And I told my parents, yeah, you, you, you gain 90,000 in one year. Nice. Right. But mm -hmm. then if you kept it now, even with this COVID situation, it's worth a million bucks minimum, right? A million bucks for a triplex, mm -hmm. getting them $3,000 each and every month. Okay. Yeah. So going back, you, you, how we're, we're in 2020 now. Okay. That's 30 years. Mm -hmm. How many years do you have, dude? You don't have an, so if you, if you keep on waiting and waiting, right. For the next recession, oh no, this is, this is too risky for me. This COVID situation or, um, this, this, uh, I'm waiting for an upswing, right? You're always waiting. Cash flow tribe. Hey YouTube, have you checked out Cashflow Tribe yet? It doesn't matter whether you're an experienced, seasoned investor or brand new to the game. I, I can probably predict if you're currently not having the level of success you want as a real estate investor, it's due to one thing. That one thing is you're not making enough offers, plain and simple. You need to be making more offers as a real estate investor if you wanna hit those big audacious goals that you're setting for yourself. So here's the deal, Cashflow Tribe, that's, that's the community that myself and Ben were making together. And so Ben's actually so busy trying to provide value to you guys that he had to take off there. But here's the deal, Cashflow Tribe is really a one of a kind community focused on results. Results. That's the difference between us and everyone else. We want to get you guys those results. I'm tired of seeing people commenting on my YouTube channel for two, three years now, but they're not making offers. What's holding you back? I, I'm gonna guess that it's either a lack of confidence or a lack of competence. And we cover both of those things in Cashflow Tribe. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make you guys a 14 day free trial offer. You can join Cashflow Tribe completely free, get it tested out. If you like it, great, stay and pay. If you don't, well I hope you at least find one great idea that you can take away and use to start making more offers, gain more deals, and finally start making the money related to real estate investing that that's probably why you're watching my YouTube channel. So let's do this, guys. Let's make 2020 your year. Cash flow, try it. If you if you keep on waiting and waiting, right for the next recession, oh no, this is this is too risky for me. This COVID situation, or um, this this uh, I'm waiting for an upswing, right? You're always waiting. All right, just be just be ready when an opportunity comes up and be willing to invest. Okay. Um, but yeah, actually you heard that phone ring, but people are calling me, right? Cause it's it, seriously business hasn't stopped, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it just changed, right? A lot, a lot of phone calls, a lot of FaceTime, a lot of this right going on. Um, but yeah, for, for, for you viewers out there, take a look at your situation. If you're able to take advantage, not advantage of people, but take advantage of the situation, Yes, you're going to be taking, um, taking this opportunity and and profiting from it there's nothing wrong with profiting okay mm -hmm. don't get the mindset of the oh my goodness like he's taking advantage and he's profiting off of people no you're taking advantage of the situation you're grabbing that ball okay you're gonna stiff arm mm -hmm. that guy and you're gonna run for that touchdown okay because that's yours mm -hmm. it doesn't come all the time but you have to be prepared for it right when you're prepared for it that means you do have to have that cash you have to have those investors out there uh your parents your 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 uncles, your aunts, that's willing to invest in you, right? Um, and they see they see that as you being young. You're 20, 25, 30 years old. You're young. Mm -hmm. okay? they're, they're probably like 50 or 60. They don't have that, they don't have the the the, the energy, the time to to continue with this. And they're looking for you as a quote unquote as a safe haven. Okay. Um, eventually I'm gonna be looking at these kids, right? <laughs> this boy, right? Um uh, I, I, I actually want this to get get this on uh, on tape here. Is that uh, way back, like three four years ago, when he was probably like four years old, we we went skiing, um, and the the ski instructor goes to all the little kids. It goes, "Hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I want to be a carpenter. What do you want to be? I want to be a police officer. Oh, what what do you want to be, little Johnny? I want to be a fireman." And then the question came to my son. I was at the back, and then Elijah, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a pillow. 
I was like, you want to be a pillow? I, I said that in my head. I was like, yo, <laughs> I don't know if I, if I should laugh or cry, right? But it, it's it's funny. It's like, it, it, is he, does he want to be lazy, right? <laughs> he, he, he's listening to me right now, right? <laughs> and my little one is screaming right now. So you want to be a pillow. Listen, you can do whatever you want. Hey, I want to be a potato because I want to be a couch potato. But I worked hard to be a, a potato now, right? So I put in my dues. I, I put in the time. I worked 40 hours. Chloe, Chloe <laughs> scream quietly. Scream quietly. I put in my dues, right? I put in my dues when I worked at TD Asset Management. When I worked, yeah. when I, when I worked 40 hours, I drove to London to do a show uh, on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. here's, here's mr pillow here okay <laughs> saturday and sunday we went for showings okay looked at properties at 1437 wonderland road at, at chapman court uh elijah go out take take uh chloe out chloe out i earn i earn my potato status if he wants to earn chloe. his pillow status yeah then he has to work hard. for you viewers out there when you're 25 years old put in the do okay mm -hmm. work your ass off okay make sure that you you can get to that pillow status when you're 45, okay? Your potato status. You're going to look for opportunities and make sure that you're not too risky. Be a little conservative. Hold that cash, okay, to weather that storm, to weather the COVID storm, to weather my um, my Hamilton my Hamilton storm. Because <coughs> when I lost, when I was losing 9000 a month, okay, selling my RSPs, that was my COVID back then. Yeah. Right? So... I had it hard back then. I don't find this hard at all. Okay. Th this is, hey, it's, is it a walk in a park? Yeah, it's, it could be. All right. Cause I felt it. I felt tenants not paying. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had nobody to rely on, nobody to say, hey, turn my, uh, turn my head to and say, hey, um, can I get some advice from? Right. I said, yeah. I, I had my art, I had, uh, I had to pay utilities, I had to pay the mortgage. Um, that the the steam boiler was a piece of junk that I had to heat up even the even in March I was sweating everybody out and I was paying two or three thousand dollars on utility bills and I had to uh, sell my RSPs to to pay nine thousand dollars even to keep people warm while they're not paying me rent. Mm -hmm. right? so that was my COVID back in two thousand and five. Yeah. So that's a little that's a little my experience to you guys is that hey once you guys hit something hard like. Your, your Hamilton, your COVID, right? Yeah. How are you going to work it, right? Make sure that you have that cash out there that you can that you can get access to, right? Don't be like me. Like I had to sell my RSPs, right? Even I wasn't even going to keep my RSPs anyways, but that's mm -hmm. it's a learning lesson, right? Is that hold a little bit more cash. There's an opportunity out there, but don't wait too long. Don't wait until uh, there's a down, that when you get down uh, a downsize from your workplace and now you're scrambling to find an investment property. That's the worst time to do it. The yeah, worst time to do it. So that's absolutely. My, that's my yeah. little answer. <laughs> yeah, no, that was amazing, sage <laughs> advice, Casey. Really appreciate it, and I 100% agree. Um, you know, we've got a little saying: problems or profits that we really try and yeah. live by. It's important to understand, no matter where you're at in your journey as a real estate investor, and no matter where you're headed, you're always going to come up against obstacles. You're always going to come up against challenges. And it's really up to us as an individual to decide, are we going to power through this and find a solution? Or are we going to like just throw up our hands, give yeah. up and admit defeat? And yeah. it, you know, it's always invigorating for me getting on calls with you or like-minded individuals, because it's always just a great reminder that we're in the driver's seat. We've got control and it's up to us to make a decision and That's just right. move forward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, this was amazing, Casey. Really appreciate you taking the time and mm -hmm. uh, great to hear that your business is doing well and that you're making the most of these opportunities. And uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll catch up in the future with some more videos. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks again to Casey for taking the time to break down for us just his perspective on what's going on during 2020's real estate market. It's already been an interesting year. I'm sure we'll have Casey back in the future to discuss with us his, his thoughts at that point in time because I'm not sure if you're paying attention, but the news is changing on a pretty regular basis right now. So if you guys wanna stay up to date with what I'm currently thinking and what I'm currently doing in real estate, then you need to be following me on Instagram and Facebook. That 
that's the most timely platforms to get my perspective and just my thought process in regards to what's going on in real estate. Otherwise, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.